that might make the world of difference. There was Dan Robson watching on David Humphreys, of course. Robson, who's heading to Wasps next season. How much of a setback is that, Matt, to lose him in the warm-up, Greg Laidlaw? Uh, do you know what? I don't think it would be as big a loss as maybe you would think. I think Dan, a lot of players are absolutely gutted, I think, that Dan Robson is leaving, leaving the club. Great cover. Is more than capable of starting the game. Adds a little bit more spice around the fringes, maybe, than Greg Laidlaw. So I don't think it'll be too big a loss. So JP Doyle is the man with the whistle. Alex Good is the man with number 10 on his back. He stood in so brilliantly against Bath last season, last minute when Charlie Hodgson was not at all well in the warm-up. A similar situation today. He played brilliantly against Bath. He'll be looking to replicate that tonight. All the skills available to him, of course, brilliant footballer. Early possession for Gloucester within their 22. Looking for that elusive victory at King's Home. They've won more away from home this season, which is uh, an unusual statistic for a club of this type with this fabulous support. First side of Billy Bonapola, who wrought a good deal of havoc against London Irish, even in the lousy conditions last week. Good, looking for the inside ball, there's Vunapola, the senior. Good. Bosch, restored to the centres this week and gobbled up gratefully by Gloucester. Apologies if you've picked up some bad language down on the pitch good to Ransom, who's the man who's stepped into his position this week, Ben Ransom, the youngster, 22 years old, making big strides. Vinopola caught on the game line by Billy Twelve Trees, and Kvesic is there on hand to try to make the most of it, and Gloucester have the advantage. Twelve Trees sends it deep into the 22 on the angle. Beautiful kick. Great stuff from the skipper, leading from the front. Wow, a great 10 seconds for him. Reads the play. It's a very simple play, obviously, it's just through the hands, but he sees Bonapola, he flies out of the line, but he knows he can get him man and ball. And Bonapola just sees a blur of red coming towards him, takes his eye off the ball slightly, and as he makes contact with the shoulder, the ball's dislodged. George Cruz securing the ball for Saris, but inside there, 22, not a huge angle for... Wigglesworth to work with. Kept in field by Halla Fenua, who's the new boy here at Kingsholm, the Tongan. Playing in typical South Sea Island style. 12 trees again, looking for the corners, looking for the territory. And another very testing kick, just not quite getting the bounce of the ball this time. A bit of a change of tactics there from Gloucester. They had a bit of an overlap. We know that Saracens can drift really well, but they had numbers. See the last man there unmarked. In the past we would have seen them go for that man. You, as the second, there was a second one. You commented on the previous one that Billy uh, Billy oh, kicked to the right hand side. It's an obvious tactic. Ransom at fullback. He does play a little bit fullback wing. Are they trying to get him out of position? Are they trying to get territory? They want to be in the right areas. It's a good start. Or do they want to compete at the line out? They've yeah, got an opportunity right, yeah. there. No. Yeah. Please use the mark. Please use the mark. Jim Hamilton running things. You'd imagine, as opposed to, to Ali Hargreaves. So, first scrum of the match. And the man in your picture there, Darren Davidjuk, who started against Exeter last week, keeping Hibbard out of the equation for the time being. Find. Distance. Distance. Let's go. Nice and quick. Let's go. Hold your space, please. I hear the referee saying nice and quick. He wants to get it right, wants to get the. The first couple right in the game, set the scene, how he wants it refereed. But he is also aware of how frustrating this is. Crouch! Bind! Maybe if we can get it right now, we get it right for the remaining 76 minutes or so. Wood there, he's already out, a long way from his hooker's backside. 
Billy Vinopola, scragged by Kvesic. And away they go through Taylor. Here's Bosch, Strettle on the outside. Suspicion of a forward pass, but Strettle drives into the 22. And presents it well. Look at Kvesic, though, in there, making no, no. a real menace of himself. Under his leg. And Under it's legs. Saris who have the early penalty. Referee said, no, no. Just see, as 12 Tree starts his movement, there's no one there. But Marcelo Bosch has got himself into position and got his foot over the ball before the last man leaves it. Yep. Give yourself the room then, John. Well, he's eager, he's willing, he's energetic. We know all of those things about Billy 12 Trees. And Gavin, Gloucester, we talked about their kicking, the change in tactics there. They're really attacking every breakdown hard, throwing three players in on some occasions, maybe leaving themselves a little bit short if Saracens can get the ball fast. Jamie George finding Hamilton. Former Gloucester skipper, of course, but look how well set Saris are, and Kelly Brown is poised. Wigglesworth breaks away. Good. Wants width on it. Bosch, big fend from the Argentinian. The advantage is with them as well. But the try line is... Very, very oh, nearby. Dropping. Back for the penalty. Yeah, Elliot Stu realising he's under real pressure. Maybe slightly later in the game. Five. That could be a decision for the referee. Maybe he thinks about sending the man to the bin. It shouldn't be any different, really. But Saracen's going very, very quickly towards the Gloucester line and Stu just collapsing them all underneath, allowing all those black shirts to fall on top of him. Elliot Stu playing tonight in place of no, Tom I'm, Palmer, I'm who was not well. In fact, Gloucester were struck in the seven week meters, by a number of different meters. players who were not feeling their best, forced to cancel a few commitments. You see the work of Jim Hamilton there, he's so powerful in the legs, he's probably one of the best scrummagers from the second row in world rugby. Working really hard and Stoop tips him over. Stay there, seven, seven Gloucester. Hamilton again, swiftly fed to Vunapola. Stoop again in a position once. that's looking like he's pulling he down. He's got to be careful. Powering over, and they may, they may have the score here. JP Doyle is heading under the post. It's a penalty try to Saracens, and reward for the big men. Nothing Gloucester could do, seemingly. Well, good refereeing, he gave Gloucester the benefit of the doubt the first time. Kept Suk on the field. But then it's the same man who gets into a poor position automatically as they land. He's almost got his own hips on the floor and then he's pulling from behind. He's slid down, he's off his feet. There's more going on from Callum Afoni, I think it is, on the far side in the red scrum hat. And a simple two points from the boot of Alex Good. And that's one way to keep Kings on quiet from the outset, the early score. Well, it'll be interesting, it was very much kickable, wasn't it? It was a kickable penalty. You can see it's actually held up, which is why he doesn't simply award the try. He goes to the penalty try. But Saracen's going for the corner, thinking they have an advantage there. Strapper gathering the restart. Gloucester need to find the energy of the opening few minutes when they were pressing so well. to gather it off the chest and onwards he goes up to halfway. Off his chest, never played it with his hands. Robson. To Vinopola. Ransom. Turning Johnny May nicely. And Johnny May is going to have a little dart with Sharples outside him. Just unable to stay on his feet. Had a really good game last week, Charlie Sharples in the 15 shirt. Squeeze ball. And this time, unable to feed the ball back. So the discipline in and around the breakdown costing Squeeze them. I'll just keep my eye on uh, what we mentioned before, didn't we, about Chris Ashton and Johnny May, the little battle that's going on there, just watching Chris Ashton have a look. Just, just tee him up a little bit, re ready for the blind side. If you do get the ball, Johnny May, I might just 
might just give you uh, give you a little bit of a, a rattling rib. Here we go. Oh, have some of that just on the blind side. Didn't follow through with the tackle, but just a warning. Didn't want a bowler do well. Also, initially went for the tackle, clear release straight onto the ball. He's so strong to move. Billy Bonapola at number eight, ready to go in for a drive, but they can't get the possession. It's gone long and it's been taken in by James Hook. It was an ambitious line out from Jamie George. Taken up by Calamafoni, who is the workhorse of this Gloucester back row, gets through so much carrying. Thought about the offload, rolls forwards. A lovely run from Kovacic. Was a bit isolated, bought his support players a lot of time. Robson has had to be very patient this season and indeed last. As Ransom is caught by Halafanua right in front of the shed. And they've won the penalty now, the home side. Tackle, knees down, he got back up with the ball. 15. Yeah, just what a difference with Kovacic just managing to get those extra Down. few yards comes in, get his team there, on the front foot when he's given it someone. pretty stationary it goes behind him a little bit of footwork thinks about the offload he's constantly thinking where he can steal the inches from and then no, no. lovely kick from Robson and a brilliant three chase from Alifanua gets the penalty shot and a chance for them to try and assert the cherry and white drive now a little bit further out than they would have wanted So Ransom caught and it's cost them a fair few metres as well. Kvesic looking to press his England claim. One of the areas that Stuart Lancaster would dearly love to see. A little bit more competition in and around that open side shirt. Chris Robshaw is captain, but no Will Fraser tonight, of course, for Saracens either. He's injured at the moment. Sharples with space to run into. Very slippery, but the double tackle does for him. Jacques Berger, part of that operation, needless to say. Ball there, ball there, your man stopping it, leave it five. That's red slow. need all his burrowing skills, Robson, for this one. Hook cross field, looking for May. He's never really felt there was enough space for him to operate in there. Well, the Gloucester back three doing a really good job. May and Sharples working well together message? to try and pick out those forward runners, the matchups. He does a really good job, and then as he steps in, he finds two big hitters in Marcelo Bosch and Jacques Berger. Probably not the two guys you want to run between, unless you want to end up looking like that. If you were to choose two, I'm not sure you'd go for those ones. A rather better functioning line out this time for Wigglesworth to send it high into the Gloucester air. It's Johnny May and those long legs are going to stretch out here, but not too far because Taylor is waiting there. And so too Alex Good. Robson, change of direction. That was neat and tidy. Saracens thought he was heading to the open side. It's going to fall to John Afoa to do the chasing. <coughs> Claimed by nobody yet. Robson to May. Hook. Pops it away. Here's Ransom. Taken quickly. Halafanua. Straightens nicely. Good momentum here for the Cherry and Whites. Morgan to Sharples. That's blocked. Good tidy in work. Brilliant control in the tackle from Berger because it looked like he'd left Alafanua too much space, but he knew exactly how much room he needed, accelerated, and it looked like the big winger might break. Hook again. Big long miss pass out to John Afoa standing in the midfield. Twelve trees to May. 
Robinson and Ashton meet him right on the game line. Nice quick hands from Hook, but the space wasn't there. Jamie George was. Robson again trying to tuck it in behind the Saris defence, but Ransom well positioned. And a very swift rebound for Kvesic. And here's 12 trees. And surely the pass had to go. Johnny May was screaming blue murder for the ball. They've got the penalty. They should have had the try. Oh, oh so I'm sorry. I, I screamed out. I know I shouldn't, but we're Brilliant talking about Kvesic. Oh, really off. He's had a cracking start. Great vision here at pace. Two on one. Schoolboy stuff. You've got the far. Look at the anger on Johnny May there. He was the guy that actually should have been in the ruck. He was so angry and quite rightly so disgusted. Ben, that is an international England centre missing a two-on-one. He doesn't know Wigglesworth there, does he? He thinks that he's done enough to burn Ransom, but he hasn't factored in the cover. Like all good scrum halves, Wigglesworth gets to him. Huge missed opportunity. You're not telling me that with the pace outside him, Gloucester wouldn't have finished that if it had gone, even if he hadn't quite he held the man. Good wouldn't have got there. May knows it. Oh. Livid. And quite rightly so, quite rightly so. He was away. He was away for what would have been his sixth of the season instead. James Hook is lining up this one from around about 10 metres in from the left-hand touchline. Laidlaw, of course, has been the, the goal kicker this season. Look at the reaction of David Humphreys. That says, you, that says everything you need to know. Well, they got three points for it. Really and honestly, it should have been five and potentially seven, of course. 12 trees will be thinking about that for some time to come. It's the sort of thing, actually, that winds up the crowd as well. I mean, it, yes, there was a bit of a, a muted cheer, but you're thinking that is, that's seven points. Johnny May's under the post there. That's not a five point, that's a seven pointer. And Humphreys, doesn't he know it? He's off for a wonder. Time to compose himself somewhere quiet. Sharples, head bandaged. Give him that a fair old rip. Strettle underneath it. Flirting with the touchline hook, but slipping through. And there's the footwork and the quality. Needs some support. There's the tackling from Saracens right now. A full 80 metre burst upfield. Classic caught man and ball, 12 trees similarly. Now the black shirt swarming. Atkinson tries to get the offload away. That's something of a trademark for him. John Afoa plays nine. Morgan inside the 22. Gloucester really needs some reward for all this pressure. Callum Afoni driven back in the tackle. 12 trees again, and Savage is on hand for the short ball. No one to the blind side. Gloucester all spread out to the right. This is where Saris generally feel quite comfortable. Without the ball, defending, defending. This defence marshalled by Paul Gustard. Nick Wood caught in possession, and Gloucester for the moment going nowhere. 12 trees, isolated. Robson pops it up nicely, and that was a very important tackle from Marcello Bosch just before the jet heels went on from Johnny May. You don't get advantage when you're doing that. You don't get advantage when you're doing that. There's a penalty coming. If I was Dan Robson, I'd be keeping my mouth shut right now. I think that's the last few phases have just summed up Gloucester's problems this year. They've been making some brilliant opportunities, but once they make them, they're making really... Well, they, they almost look like they're stuck in the headlights a little bit. One-on-one, -on -one they, they've got the players to create things. But after this break, phenomenal break, lovely footwork. 
great balance. This is open play. From this breakdown, that ball should have gone, but they're in behind. From this play, they've got huge numbers in midfield against a really stretched defence, and they just pass it through the hands. They need different players running different lines. Trying to drag defenders, that was so easy for Saracens to defend. Imagine if that ball had come to, for example, in a, a Bath team, and they all would have been running different angles, setting problems for the defenders in front of them. But there, really easy for the man. Every player knew who was getting that ball. They just stepped in and snuffed out the plate. From an almost identical position then. Straight as a die, there's the benefit of the sighter early on, but James Hook seems to have brought his kicking boots with him tonight. One point in it. I'll tell you what, I know, I know, that, uh, I know that you mentioned that it should have gone, Ben, but I'm just having a quick look. I'm having a quick look at um, a replay of Richard Brigglesworth, who got in the mid got in the way, and I think I don't think that he could have passed that ball. I'm not sure Hook could have got that ball away, you know. I'll try and get it up for you. Put it an initial break problem, wasn't it? And that's actually almost sounds like I'm being sorry, Ben. Yeah, dangerous ball here that Gloucester allowed to drop, and Saracens are on the charge now through George Cruz. Worth for Ashton, wriggling his way forwards to the short side they go, inside from Vunapola to Vunapola. Really good, extra little burst as well, important couple of metres, Kelly Brown takes it on. Good, Taylor cutting back against the grain and meeting cherry and white shirts. Sarri's all clustered around in a, a very small area. Now a little bit of space opening up, potentially on this open side. Good for Vunapola. Dragged down by John Arfoa. Well, seven. And there's a penalty coming, and it's Matt Kvesic who is infringed, a little dink over the top, it's a chip to nothing. Seven. At least show, at least show me you're trying. There was no evidence. I know, but there was no evidence of anything. Going back to that point, it almost sounds like I'm being overly critical of Gloucester, but it's because it's frustrating, because they're making opportunities that they could be really challenging teams and the best teams. They make It's so difficult to get in behind teams. If they could just get this part of the game right, they would be exactly where they want to be, Alex. and they're not there yet. Yeah, Ben, just uh, got, got this uh, clip of how much work. Just going to pause. It's a highlight where Richard Wigglesworth here. He's got a mark. Stop Sharples with the headband on. He does so well to get back here. Arms in the air. I'm not sure that Hook can get no, that ball away. It couldn't. And at the time, I was screaming, saying, that's a three-on-one gone. Great work from Richard Wigglesworth. Only had one, yeah. yeah. Good one. It was that extra focus before the game and not talking to Bafes, I think, that did it. <laughs> A class act. Wigglesworth, he's been around a long time as well. His 198th Premiership appearance tonight. He's going some. And the stand in, stepping up nicely. ability to slot him in pretty much anywhere and you know you're going to get quality incredibly reliable super versatile Bosch injured last week he's played very limited rugby for Saracens this season of course away through November with Argentina. Sharples feeding Morgan. Oof. There's 
one at the neck for James Hook. <laughs> Twelve trees blocked. And it's a Gloucester line out. He offers so much, Billy Twelve Trees, doesn't he? But it's his decision making which has been criticised over the, the last couple of years, particularly since his rise to the England ranks. Ben, is it something you can eradicate from his game, or is it just the way he plays? Oh, he's, he's still very much appreciated in the England setup. A lot of that is his leadership and the amount he talks in, in the 15, midfield. Seven, go inside 15. I mean, it's a big call, isn't it? It's, way it's way does he make that mistake and the ball goes through Once. when England are in a tight game? You can't go on it. You can't go on it. Hook sending it high. Halifanua racing in. Sharples two. This is 12 trees. Nowhere to go. Hook. Big fend on Wigglesworth who recovers nicely. Dabbage up. And the penalty to Saracens. There's nobody there, there's no need to go straight off. And that's what we mean when we talk about Sarri's being comfortable in defence. Ben, they would have been entirely happy with Gloucester playing a bit of rugby in, in and around their 22-metre line. Well, even to the extent that they were quite happy that they only had three, maybe four defenders on this side against a lot of Gloucester shirts had this ball come out. But the decision just for Savage just dropping to his chest and not supporting his own weight, he wasn't needed to do it, there was no-one else in there. I think Gloucester are getting caught in between two styles of kicking they're, they're not either kicking the ball to retain down the channel um, keeping it risk keeping the risk low or thump the ball deep turn saracens and get your chase on at the moment they're doing neither and then they get then they're being ill-disciplined you can see that the costa don't want to play in their own 30 meter zone that's fine but they've got to get their exit right and i think saracens are almost trying to tempt them to play there no one wrapped around the corner we never see saracens doing that it's almost as though go on you're in your own 22 we want you to Just run tease from you in a bit yeah absolutely right so the ball has blown time over short. and while that happens and alex time good short. resets he's a little seconds. short of time kelly brown is going to help him out so this is going to be a little bit of a rush job but the outcome is the same cool as a cucumber let's have a word with Saracen's assistant coach Alex Sanderson. Um, first up, Alex, your stand in number 10 is doing a reasonable job, isn't he? Yeah, really happy with Goody. Not just his kicking at goal, but his kicking in phase play with, uh, with Wigglesworth from the base of those rooks there. We're winning that territory battle, as you're saying, up there in the box, and our defensive shape looks really good at the moment, so we're earning penalties on the back of that. Bit of a let off, though, wasn't there, up the other end of the pitch with, uh, with 12 trees failing to see May outside him? Well, yeah, yet again, though, it's from a charge down kick. It was from uh, a break in play, not from the general uh, run of the game, really. And again, a couple of uncharacteristic missed tackles on the counter attack from kick chase, which led to the other penalty. So, all in all, we're pretty happy with how we're uh, dealing with a set piece and how we're winning that territory battle, as, as you're saying there in the box. Thanks for your time, Alex. Thanks, Bud. Roster in possession, Robson to a foa. And onwards through the hands of Elliot Stook. And gets it away. Did well under a lot of pressure there. No release from Saris. They want to take it quickly. Jim Hamilton's having a bit of afters. I think as well, you could tell how much he was appreciated down here by the fact that when a second row from the opposition throws a flurry of not his hardest punches, let's be honest, there was just a little bit of bit of dancing really, but they all cheered as they love him down here. Made his mark, didn't he, in, uh, in three seasons here at King's Home. That's a fairly high number of tackles missed after only 28 and a half minutes for Saracens. They do tend to miss a few more than other teams, though, don't they, with the speed of their, their defensive line. Yeah, they try and fly up hard in midfield, which bounces teams back inside. Tend to miss... Quite a few of their tackles, but if someone else gets them, I don't know whether they count them as a miss on their own tackle statistics. And it was a rare opportunity for Gloucester, and the line-out 
was burgled, and Ashton has given it a good thump. If you win it, it's outside. George Crew's doing a really if good you win job it, there. It's outside. Yeah. Get another shot at it. A few meters further back. Onwards nice and swiftly. Stuk breaks away. Vinopola is there. Use it. Savage. Scored that try last week against the Chiefs at Sandy Park. Hook. Sharples. Five! That was a basic from Jim Hamilton. Never looked like he was on his feet. Flopped on top. Ball came back to Saracen's side. He needed to make an effort to roll away. He gets caught. See, Gloucester, they go for this move where Kovacic looks like he's driving and pops out. Billy. Really, they don't want to be winning that on the five-metre line because it gives the Saracens defenders enough time to recover and all those tail gunners no. to get on to Johnny May and the fast runners out wide all through that 10 channel. You see his feet were taken away from him by the initial carry, but you can't stay there, Jim, you've got to roll away. Matt, Matt. So relatively straightforward effort then for James Hook, certainly much more central than the other two that he's knocked over. But he hasn't done an awful lot of place kicking this season. He did actually start as the, the first choice kicker right at the hooker, yeah. kicker. Right at the start of the season, but Laidlaw took over to excellent effect. He's been kicking around about the 80% mark. That is extremely unfortunate, to say the least, for the home supporters. Hello, Fanua. Trying to inject a um, little bit of bruising aggression to proceedings. What a let off for Saris. Hook. Savage. I just wonder how much the noise inside King's home affected James Hook there. It was pretty raucous. The kind of noise you would expect for an opposition kicker, perhaps. 12 trees to Calamaphoni, met hard by Jacques Berger. Does he meet you any other way? Classic. Ball is lost. The referee's not happy, and we might see a card. Or a talking to. Yeah, I think he's just going to talk to the captain. Before he's done anything. Not rolling is now against you guys. They keep going, they're gone. Yeah, there's been a few you're off, you're off your feet first. decisions at the breakdown for players not supporting their own weight. Just that cumulative thing. Strettel reads the play really well. You see Vunapola never really supporting his own weight. Hands are on the floor, elbows are on the floor, one knee drops. Uh, ben, if I, if I, to answer the question about Billy Twelve Trees, what is he good at? R running hard and running a lot. Right, line. so I'll sh let me show you this line out. Billy Twelve Trees, we want to see him running through line outs. All right, Gloucester have manipulated the back of the line out. Johnny May creating a hole for here. Here comes Billy Twelve Trees. Get through that hole, get into Alex Good and make a nuisance of yourself. You know, you've got to use him in that position. Kvasic lurking. They're tacklers, they're okay. And a little bit of momentum building. Yeah, this is good. We've got to keep that control. Same keep ball. players going past same the ball like we just saw there, and in a bit of impetus. Referee saying it's the same ball. Just shearing off the players at the front, working hard. Trying to spew those black shirts out. Away they come. Hook for Atkinson. Racing onto it, his sharples, oh, he needed to stay on his feet there. Undone by the surface, it was a little bit lateral. 
Away goes Robson, tries the inside ball. Get into touch. It is lateral. Thought it. That's probably because they're their they're outside players have got such good footwork that, that occasionally they beat people when you when they, <laughs> the inside backs take all their space. But no one cuts so back, Ben. Exactly, no got to hold that drift. Over here. Sorry, it's going you'd, you'd be, as a forward, you'd be happy defending that all day long. So the, uh, the touch judge here has advised Jim Hamilton might just have been holding a player down off the ball for rather longer than he should have. I think that was right at the start, but whether it was him doing the holding down or whether it was the Gloucester player, I think Physios. was Savage. Physios. It was off the mall. Okay, just be aware. Okay, just be aware. Seven. Six. So, lost his turn to try to disrupt the Saracens line out, but George Cruz won't allow anything like that. Very efficient. That's once. And buying Wigglesworth some space here as well, despite the attentions of Kvesic. Johnny May. Marshalled by Chris Ashton. And there's the advantage. Dan Robson is away. A little chip over the top. If he can gather, it is his. Has he got the touch? Oh, what a he has. That is sensational. Dan Robson. Well, I mean, there's no. Has he given a try straight away? Has he given a try from that? Or is he going to have a look? We can have a look, sure. have a look. I mean, he was very he confident, it. celebration. It I'm reminded sure me of the old Dan Luger try back in about 2000 yeah. where he got his yes, left yes, hand on it at Twickenham. Wow, what a finish. Decision-making, absolutely spot on. Take advantage of the confusion with Jim Hamilton, and then when he gets to the other end, look at this control. Wow. Absolutely wow. perfect. Incredible. That looks good to me. may be leaving for pastures new, but he is determined to make his mark in the rest of this season. Well, to, to have the vision to get round that little short side, to chip all the skills possible and okay, the speed. JP, you may award the try. Confirmation of one of the great Premiership scrum half scores. Sniping the blind side. The weighted chip, and that is some finish. I did like the way that he celebrated as well. Uh, you know, I know he's going to Wasps, but you get a feeling he's still very passionate. He is very passionate about this club. It meant a lot to him. Shed gets excited, get this kick over, all of a sudden it's back to the good old days. He's been a frustrated man. That much is clear. Playing behind Laidlaw before that, Jimmy Cowan. He's had to bide his time. And because he's fed up of being number two, he's off to Wasps. For me, the try was all about his decision-making when Jim Hamilton fell through the rut and caused the confusion. He's rolling there, and it means that there's no guard defender in. He knows that they're going to be short of players there. Bonapola's the the there to put a shot on him. He drops it onto his foot. Bonapola pulls out. It really meant a lot to Robson. Brilliant. It meant a lot to a lot of people in these parts. He scored a great try against Bath, of course, remember, as well. Dan Robson, there was a lot of talk that, that maybe they'd be moving things around and playing Laidlaw a bit at 10, allowing Robson some more game time. Here's Ashton, who was one of those who was caught on the ground as Robson made his break, and that's too much. Right, you might hear a donkey sound in a minute, I think. Oh, there it is, there it is. Be well used to it by now.
Seven tries in his last 11 in all for Saris. He remains very significant strike force as far as they're concerned. Crouch. Only the second scrum of the Five. night. Set. Right foot, right foot. Only the second reset. Right foot. <laughs> Come this way. Tight head, right foot went there. Talking to Alex Sanderson not so long ago, he was suggesting the notion of, and I know it's been suggested before now, of a, of a specialist scrum ref who comes onto the field simply for just, the set pieces. Somebody who is expert. We all expect every referee to be expert, of course, in these in these arts, but if you is are... Ben? Is that Ben? Ben's got to go on maybe, the pitch. Maybe we've found him a new job. <laughs> you could double up. No, it would have to be someone be who played up. in that position. And they might take a long time to get to the scrums, <laughs> judging by most of the retired props I've seen. Here's Hook. Atkinson. Gets it away nicely. 12 trees, quick hands. Penalty, deliver and knock on. Away to Alifanua. It's a deliberate knock on, so... The advantage is with Gloucester, they can't hang on to it. But we're going to see a card here. 11. Deliberate Tuck knock on. Yeah. It's Tuck Dave Strattel. JP Doyle has lost his patience. The Shedder happy. Ten minutes to cool off. The worst thing that's going to happen for this King's home crowd is half time's only a minute away. They've just wrestled the momentum. The crowd are lifting. They don't want this half to end now. Oh, it depends how quickly he kicks it. Yeah. Well, you feel it's very significant that Hook should make them pay for this from here, from not quite 40 metres out. And there's the incident. Okay. Spot on. Hard to argue with it. He's had a, a double go at that. And the second go was hand in the air as if, oh, no, I did put my hand up in the air. Yeah, whatever, you're not fooling anyone there, Strats. And when you said he was cooling down, he's been on the left, I don't think he's touched it, <laughs> has he? He'd be frozen. A chance to put Gloucester into the lead. not to be and Duncan Taylor hoofs it away so Saracen's a man down and with a slender two-point advantage but a couple of kicks there that James Hook really should have nailed down Gloucester at least on the scoreboard should be in front
Welcome back to King's Home, and it's the visitors who are in the lead at the moment by 13 points to 11 and what's been said in that dressing room now. And we think they'd be pretty content with the way they're playing. Just need to be a little bit more clinical at times, maybe. But don't forget, the rugby fun continues on BT Sport this weekend. Well, just after this weekend, actually, with Rugby Tonight. Reviews, previews, madness, mayhem, an hour and a half of wall-to-wall -wall rugby to start your week off in the best possible way. That's Monday, 8 p.m., uh, BT Sport Rugby Tonight. And our special guest this week is Danny Cipriani. Well, Andy, it's just what I said there, isn't it? One would think that Gloucester would be pretty content with the way that they're playing in that first 40. I'm probably a little disappointed not to be um, ahead on the scoreboard. Yeah, definitely. They've had definitely had chances. You know, they've created some good stuff. The set piece has gone well. The scrums function well. So I think, you know, they've got to be pretty upbeat in the changing room. I think the message from the coach will be keep doing what you're doing, you know, try and keep eradicate penalties. You know, St. Saracen's got good from the from the tee. So I think just keep doing what they're doing, really. Yeah, we spoke uh, pre-match about how important the start was. I mean, they didn't have a, a perfect start. A penalty try uh, conceded with Sarri's opting to go for touch rather than, than a kick to the post. Yeah, I think they uh, they fancy their drive and line out. And, yeah, so oh, looking here, yeah, they've, they've obviously backed and, and worked on this in the week for you know, using their driving line as a weapon. Uh, Gloucester have gone for the sack technique there by the look of it with Elliot Stoop. Unfortunately, he didn't get Jim Hamilton to grind straight away, so then it's, it's really hard to defend that. Yeah, you're not a fan of that technique, you were telling me in the stands there, are you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. You get sort of one shot out, really, you know, and then it's really hard to sort of defend that if, if you don't get that sack technique and the man to grind. And uh, pre-match again, you were quite excited by the fact that Don, Don Robson was going to start this match, and, and he certainly showed us what he could do with that fantastic try. A great finish. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Dan. Um, you know, maybe what you lose a bit with, from the tee and a bit of stability with, with Greg, you're going you're to gain in a bit of X factor with Dan. You know, he's got a definite eye for the gap. You know, and as he's, you know, I've seen, we've seen him do that countless times now for Gloucester. Yeah, and he's off to Wasps, of course, next season. He's going to be a big loss, one would have thought, to this club. Yeah, definitely. He's a Gloucester fan, that's a big loss. So, <laughs> and, yeah, I think it's, uh, that's a great sign for Wasps. And, you know, that's, that's, that's the decision he's made, and I wish him the best with it. Yeah, but it's, it's the same old mistakes we're seeing a little bit with Gloucester tonight again, uh, like we've seen over the last few weeks. They're, they're creating those chances. I mean, they're opening Sarri's up, but they're just kind of making the wrong decisions the wrong, at the wrong time. And there's a perfect example down here, wasn't there, with that two-on-one where Johnny May was screaming for the ball. Yeah, definitely. I mean, chances like this against Saracens don't come on very often. It's just, you know, it's, it's a hard one for Billy. Maybe, you know, you look at that in, in hindsight and think maybe I should have given it, but, you know, it's, it's, it's easy from here. But, you know, that that's that's the seven points we've really given away there. But, no, they're, they're, they're doing the right things. You know, like I said, they had a good driving line which I know the pack would be happy with sort of towards the end of the game. They've scrummaged well, so I think they've just got to keep building, keep ball. Uh, I think Saracens are definitely sort of there. They're sort of saying to Gloucester, you, you know, you have the ball. You know, at rut time, they're not committing. Yeah, they're not competing. No, they're not committing. No, time. they're almost they're almost saying to Gloucester, you have it, we back our defence. So I think, you know, with Dan Robson, I think they've got to start sort of attacking around those fringes now, especially around the ruck, and hopefully suck them in, and, you know, then we can use our, our pace out wide. Yeah.
Andy, obviously, um, Gloucester have the man advantage now. Sarries are down to 40 men for the next eight and a half or so minutes. So what will the message be for that opening period of the second 40 from a Gloucester perspective? Yeah, I think they'll want to keep the ball. You know, their men will want to make Saracens work. They're, they're a man down, so I think you've got to try and put pressure on to keep making those tackles, keep defending drives, keep defending line outs. So I th hopefully, you know, they can, you know, again, get a good field position, put the, use their driving line out, which they did in the first half to good effect, and then hopefully they can exploit the, the extra man out wide. And Mark McCall, what, were, what uh, orders will he be issuing the troops? I think he'd definitely be saying no penalties, just cut out the penalties, you know, they've, that's... We've been lucky they Gloucester have missed a couple from the from the tee, um, but I think his, his main message will be no more penalties. And I think they'll be looking to use their driving line out again. Obviously, they've got the penalty try, so in the ref's mind, they'll be thinking that they've got an upper hand there. Lovely. Thanks for your time, Andy. OK, back to yeah. you guys in commentary then for the second half. Who's that? Nigel, you're not through great. Saracens then without that man yeah. in your picture. Yeah, yeah. For the next okay. eight minutes or so, at least. And it was Gloucester with the momentum going into half-time. A half illuminated by that sublime try from Dan Robson. Really was special. No changes for either side since the half-time break. Worth clears straight down the middle and Morgan is waiting there waiting for a chance here's hook dabs it through and finds touch for uh, a Sarri's line out just outside there 22 let's hear from Martin Bayfield who's got news from the touchline thanks Ali yeah, from uh, from Saracens Paul Gustav and Alex Hansen troop past me puffed out their cheeks all they said was discipline we've got to be more disciplined Bit more info from Gloucester, quite interesting. Trevor Woodman saying the team that plays the less rugby could win this game. They're going to try and get their forwards running around the corner a bit more. And the instruction to the players is don't get bored with the kicking game. Thanks, Babes. Yep, seven penalties conceded by Sarri so far in this match. Which at the halfway stage would be a little bit of a concern. Jacques Berger is controlling the ball here at the, the back of this ball. There's the advantage. Is worth looking for Ashton, and that's not going to happen. Worrying for Gloucester. Oh, seemingly easy. Saracens set that mall up. They managed to get one on one with Kovacic at one stage. It was about, I say one on one, it was about eight on one, wasn't it? Yeah. See, once they roll around here and they lose all those red shirts. It's going to be very difficult to stop legally. Callum Afoni just having to come in at the side there. That's what the penalty's for. So Sarri's with a, a 40 metre gain. And here's Jamie George, of course, he's having a lot of game time this season in the absence of Skulk Brits. Again, they're looking to drive the life out of Gloucester. As they head up towards the 22. Once. And he's with Jamie George. George Cruz trying to make sure the instructions are getting through to the men right at the heart of the action. Okay, the Gloucester players are facing the wrong way there. And then have to come out the side again. Free shot. The advantage is with Saracens. The ball dabbed through and Robson hacks it away. We're going to see a card here. Look at Savage, who's being given it, coming in at the side. But again, just that peel in field by Saracens. And the, all the Gloucester players who are working their socks off to try and stop it just got turned and were facing okay, back towards their own try line. There's Gloucester, nothing you can do. Just good control of the pace. Knew when to speed it up, went to slow it down, and there you can see George Crew just trying to self-police matters, but in at the side, and drops it down. How do they solve that, Ben? Have they just got to at source, get it to the deck straight away? That is the key now. When you're five out, it's a lot harder to do that and not give away a penalty for going early. 14 aside then, and Jim Hamilton feeding Mako Vunapola. This is looking ominous for the Cherry and Whites. Saracens think 
they have their second. And JP Doyle confirms as much. It's Billy Bonapola who's being credited with the score. I think just to answer your question, Dawes, when, when you're that much under the pressure and you have been for three drives on the trot, you, you've got to not think about the technique, you, you've just got to all fly in and try and cause chaos. There, Saracens are already set up. Look how slow Gloucester are to get bodies behind. They all stay to mark their men. It's a long line against a fist coming at them, and the fist just smashes its way through. Yes, as far as Gloucester are concerned now, I mean, that's, as you say, three or four line-out drives. They're in the huddle under, underneath the post, thinking, mm, all right, the ball's got to be in play. Now, all of a sudden, Gloucester can't kick the ball off the pitch because Saracens are just going to drive them over. I think what was the penalty was in their own half initially, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was. Three from three tonight for Alex Good. This is probably the toughest of the evening for him. And taken away on the breeze, which has definitely picked up since kickoff. And another try to add to the list for Billy Vunapola. Just look, it's the work of the guys at the front. You can see how hard Jim Hamilton's working. Duplessis alongside him, hidden because he's doing the graft down low. Big motivation for Vunapola tonight, of course. Ben Morgan stole his England shirt in November. He wants it back. A lot of uh, articles this week about the big man. He's been speaking about the uh, the worry that he has had over that situation, the upset that it caused when he was dropped. And he's determined to win his place back. We were talking a little bit at half-time about Billy Twelvetrees and whether he's almost trying to do a little bit too much. I just wonder when Bonapola was having that poor run, whether he was trying to just do a little bit too much. Maybe the England coaches were saying, we need you to do more of this, need you to do more of that. Looks much better when he gets back to his simple, aggressive game. Driven on by Stoop. This is looking promising for Gloucester. Foa feeds it back and David Juk carries it up. One of two men winning their 100th or making their 100th appearance for the club tonight. Johnny Mays the other, and here goes Halafanua. Deep inside the 22. Chances maybe for Gloucester. Got to hang on to the ball. Stook is the target man. Morgan continues the motion. And again, having to ferris in there to dig it away. 12 trees. Atkinson. Oh, a lovely offload. Here's Johnny May. That was absolutely fantastic. And here is a score, is it? Has he got that down? Black shirts swarming all over the top of James Hook, I think it was. Yeah, he, he was having to work very hard. He just lost control, didn't he, of the ball. Maybe it was slightly behind him. Ended up catching it behind his back, or at least holding it there. And it allowed, I think it was Alex Good, the opportunity to get on it. You see, a little reverse play just to create that opportunity on the outside. But look, tie in two defenders, delay the ball out the back door as long as possible. In behind them, quick ball. Oh, if he's... If he's literally no, no, half no, no, a step no, later there, Hook, he crashes over the line and no one can hold him up. Richard Hibbard onto the field at Hooker, and you get an idea from the Hibbard hair that the wind is now a major factor. Davidjuk makes way. So tomorrow, 3 o'clock, live on BT Sport, we're at the stoop for Harlequins against Leicester. Leicester lying in fifth place at the moment, Quinn's down in eighth. They've been speaking a lot this week about the need to really push on through this spell, through the new year and the period in the Six Nations when they and other clubs will lose plenty of players. Great chance this. For Gloucester to assert themselves, though. Get on the outside, Find please. a way back in. Get on the inside, please. There's just no need for any of that. Let's not have that. 
I didn't say anything. Not long now. Get in your slot, outside. Crouch! Time to get your coat off, Dave. Find! Set! A really good surge from Saracens initially, but Morgan has it. JP Doyle doesn't like the look of that. Ben Morgan. Hey, hey, check, check, I'm here. Check, check, I'm here. That looks nasty. It's the left knee by the looks of things, and the anxiety of the players all around him to make sure that the path was cleared for the medics to arrive suggests it's not good news. So integral to everything David Humphreys and Laurie Fisher are trying to build here, Ben Morgan. That leg has not moved. <coughs> Obviously, medical staff prodding lower down. And the inside of the shin, good carry. Gets the latch on. Oh, yeah, you can just see that leg of the tackler to the side of his lower leg, putting its weight through it. It's not terribly often, Ben, is it, that you, that you hear and really notice the players all around a mass of bodies like that, clearing out of the way with the speed that they did there. Uh, particularly that close to the line when you know the defense are concentrating on one thing having said that in amongst the tough stuff on the floor you do tend to know when someone's seriously injured and players despite them knocking all sorts of things out of each other regularly they have a huge respect and what they're, they're all trying to do and how important safety is so the oxygen on for Ben Morgan and here are the scores and the nicely positioned for the first which ended up being a penalty try as JP Doyle trotted under the posts and they've they've caused a lot of trouble with that that drive haven't they yeah it's been an area that Gloucester just haven't been able to deal with it on any part of the pitch really special finish from Robson but then here we go as Dor said I think that started just outside Saracens 22 with three kicks to the corner or three kicks to the touchline three penalties given away by Gloucester or two penalties given away by Gloucester and then they finish it off at the end so no doubt very mixed emotions for Billy Bonapola as his rival for that England number eight shirt lies prone He's been plagued, hasn't he, in recent times with injury. He was just gathering a bit of momentum through November and the rest of the season. Matt. I've just been having a look at where well, we're asking for Gloucester to hit some lines because usually we have been seeing Gloucester. This has been the way, Ben, isn't it? Very lateral going about the field. Who's going to cut that line? Come on, make something make something a little bit different. It's John Afoa. There's a prop forward, there's a tight head prop forward there, cutting the line. Look at him hit that line, check the defence to all of a sudden get a little bit of momentum. I never thought that I would be saying that. Austin Hilly would be absolutely devastated by that. Hang on, he's been chasing the kicks as the, the only player off the <laughs> box kick. It's all over the place, John Afoa. You're doing your best, anyway. Don't see any of the, full of, of the back scrummaging doing his <laughs> job. <laughs> You set yourself up for that, Matt. I did, I did, I did. No, credit where it's due, and it makes a difference. It's the little things like that that make the difference. That's one of the reasons why he was so well coveted paid. and, and <laughs> well, well paid. No, he is so good around the field, and you speak to any of the people involved with Gloucester, they all say that since he arrived, just his professionalism and the effect he's had on the other players, he was a quality signing.
think the key was, you said about him being well paid, the only key was to try and keep him fit. And touch wood, so far, he's looking in pretty good nick, isn't he? Yep, Gloucester's marquee signing. Outstanding for Ulster. And part of the Rugby World Cup winning squad for New Zealand, of course, in 2011 on home soil. Don't forget, we're just uh, a week away from Europe once again the Champions Cup back on your screens on BT Sport we've got a host of fabulous matches for you no pleasure in this. of course Saracens in action against Munster at Allianz next Saturday we're off as well to Toulouse to follow Bath's progress they've got a bit of work to do if they had to find a way out of their pool Saracens quite nicely set up in pool one Claremont leading the way by just a single point Monster very much part of the equation as well. So we wish Ben Morgan well and we hope for a speedy recovery. Initial inspection looked like it might have been a knee, but I think the, the subsequent probing, Ben, it might even be a leg break. I think that's probably what they're worried about. They've put a Air splint on it, try and keep it still. And the good sign that we can know for sure is that there was nothing sticking out where it shouldn't have been. Let's just pray that it went right to the point of breaking but didn't break. So Gareth Evans is on at number eight for Gloucester. He himself missed the early part of the season with knee problems. He's a, a player who's growing fast into his role, 23-year-old from Swindon. And he's going to get a first touch if he can grab a hold of the ball and immediately Wigglesworth hangs on to him. Gloucester having to build again. They had the, the sting rather drawn from their attack over the recent minutes. Kvesi. Brilliant last week. Evans with fresh legs. Keen to make an impact. Five metres out. Elliot Stook. Robson to hook. Away it goes to Sharples. Johnny May, quick change of direction. Duncan Taylor had to be alert. Hibbard drives hard into Petrus Duplessis. They need it quickly. Robson gets it away. Hook for Nick Wood, who coughs it up. Ben, they did not watch your demo on Monday Night Rugby tonight, did they? I'm not sure about that. It was a really good carry from Hibbard, though, wasn't it? Lovely little change of direction. First from Sharples, then May did one. Hibbard carried well, they got quick ball. You okay, Par? Okay. You just feel that there were just one too many picks around the corner. Just change the emphasis maybe five or ten yards out further out you were talking on monday night about having those different layers of running coming from deep smashing up it was a little bit static yeah i think if wood holds that you need to get steady so and they, they get quick ball they can go around the corner really really quickly and potentially give them numbers on that outside it's the choice wasn't it between just putting it behind wood as he crashed up and tied in those defenders that ended up making the hit it's good to see them carrying hard. And we've seen so often the ball just given to a forward, one out, standing still, and then sort of trying to generate momentum against three defenders. They were posing a few more problems to the defenders there. Really 
causing trouble for the Glossarite now, Saris. That's three times Hibbard has been popped up in the middle. We weren't having those problems, just in being introduced. Davidute going off, maybe disrupted things slightly. See how low a foe usually likes to be. He's a little bit higher there, maybe trying to get up to a, a level that Hibbard prefers, but it's not quite working there, is it? Ooh, change of plan from Alex Goode, who decides on the ambitious approach. And Bosch has overcooked that by an awful long way. Nice idea. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was. I thought it was the right option. Look, I mean, Gloucester were just going for that line out. Quick thinking from Good. Hadji didn't need the long ball. Just play the hands, pick the men off. Go ten. One of you go you ten. see, Ransom was screaming for the ten. ball and got missed out. And then, uh, well, was it off his shin, his knee, his ankle? Not one you want to remember there for Bosch. <laughs> it was almost too clean a connection, I think, wasn't it? And here, Gloucester generating a bit of a rumble. They struggle, of course, back on the field, so Sarri's restored to 15 men. The defence is splintering here a little bit. Oh, there we go. Hook, Atkinson, I'm impressed with him tonight. Again, the grubber through. Johnny May chasing, but Ransom back in good time. It's so lateral. It, it, it need, John Ofoa somehow needs to get on the left wing there. I don't know how he's going to do it, but... Someone from Gloucester, Richard. please cut a line and create some indecision in a Saracens back line, and you might get the ball to either, well, probably Johnny May on that le left-hand side. And let's see him around. We know what he can do. I was just, I was just trying that drive him all. You're just seeing the danger now of Robson and what Saracens are thinking about because Saracens are having to squeeze their defence around those rucks and malls because they can't give him any space, and there is a little bit more space out wide for Gloucester. Robson trying to find room. Instead, it's the new man onto the field, De Kock. He's replaced Wigglesworth, and the, the job share continues. Oh, just about hung on to that. Charlie Sharples, Gloucester heading in reverse, 12 trees in trouble. Charge down, and Sharples is there. Skipping through one tackle. Did very well to fire that away, but Saris will come again through good. A little bit of indecision. And Lost to reset Tackle. their defensive line. And this time it's Duplessis' turn to spill the ball. Okay. Lost to playing fast and loose here. Yeah, again, 12 trees just takes too long. Probably slightly fortunate that the collision came in. Better, better timing. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Player out of his stride and Duplessis looks up. Tackles coming in. So Gloucester back to 15. Both hookers, come on. Come on, here Savage we go. Station marks. Takes his place again in the second row. I wouldn't fancy putting the ball in the scrum here if I was a Gloucester scrum half. Ben, big scrum this, isn't it? Crouch! Gotta stay down. You might find a feed here. I'm not going not down straight down the middle. Set! Yeah, now as quickly as possible. Hard to tell from that angle, but it's solid They're enough. Safe now. They're safe oh, now. Hook. Atkinson again. He can defeat Sharples, but instead it's Ransom who picks up on the run. To Cock, feeding the heavies. Hughes. Out. Again, not keen to play any sort of rugby in their half. That sounded like it took a deflection from Neil de Kock. Straight into touch and he's holding his hands up. Lost a forward pack, just having a little huddle there, just making sure they get the call right. is going to pass it on to Hibbard. Driving. Aspect has really looking like possibly their most potent weapon. 
Over 15. Not the not back, straightest not of throws from Richard Hibbard. Legal. A with the clear seven. out. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it was Johnny May who collected that on the nod. Savage crashing into Berger. He's put his body on the line again this evening. Robson goes high. May trying to clear a path. Oh, has he hung on to that? Extraordinary. Run away, Saris. Quite brilliant. 12 trees. Cross fields. Nicely angled. Five metres out. Johnny the Cat, mate. A good ball into the corner from B12 trees. What a take, though. It was something a little bit special from Johnny May, and he does have that ability just to come up with the magic. Bit of aerial genius now then. First mass tackler now Maul. Maul now. So he's trying to steal an extra meter or so here. Use it. To cock. Not a whole lot of gain there. No, it's not. It's still within range. Judging by a couple of Gloucester's drives, they've got to secure the ball first. Well, this is an interesting call. Callum Braley is replacing Dan yeah, Robson with 23, 24 minutes to play. Well, he'll remember this night for a while because that was a very, very special try that he scored. Braley is the man most likely to prosper with Robson off to Wasps next season. Keen to give him some game time, Seven clearly. Seven, don't collapse it! That's OK. He's lost the ball. Stook, again, who's worked very hard in the loose and the close exchanges. 12 trees sets off. Driven to the ground by Mako Vunapola. Braley feeding Hibbard. Big impact with Cruz and Billy Vunapola waiting. Braley. Sharp bit of footwork from the new man. Hook to Ofoa. Straight over the top of the ball. Duncan Taylor's in danger of giving up the penalty. Instead, it's 12 trees who's straightening and offloading Hibbard through the hands of the hooker to Kovacic. Five metres out. Lovely line cut by James Hook, and it's kept alive. Here's Gareth Evans. Just a couple more big surges, and Gloucester will be back in the mix. Use it! Volume raised. That's good, screaming for support. And Nick Wood may have not had so Saracen's caught offside. I thought there was a little fumble there. It may have been because of the offside. It's going to be in the posts. And they're being patient, Gloucester. That's the right decision with the quality that they've got and people that can break a tackle. Just, again, every time they've gone long, they've struggled there. The referee had judged that to have gone over the 15, which meant Saracens aren't tied to normal line-out rules. The line-out's over as soon as it goes over 15. When they've thrown a little bit closer to the front, they've had more opportunity. Maybe it's because in past games they've thrown long and then been able to drive back towards the corner and they haven't run out of room, but it's just a risky, risky option. Nice and simple for James Hook as Gloucester draw a little closer. And uh, further replacement onto the field in Ernst Joubert. Martin Bayfield, who do you have with you? 
I've got Richard Wiggles, Wheelsworth with me, who's looking a little bit more comfortable here than his Saracens teammates out on the pitch. Talking to Alex Hansen at half-time, he was saying discipline is key. Another penalty against you there. Yeah, we're shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit, especially when we had the win first half. We needed to really keep our discipline because it's really hard to get out of there. And been a little bit better second half, but it's going to be tough to uh, have any sort of field position uh, with this win, which is only getting stronger. And it looks like it's getting a bit lively. I'll hand back to you. Thanks, Blake. Lively is the word. Johnny May has decided on adventure, and here goes Gareth Evans. A barnstorming run from the replacement eight. Needs to get the offload away. Brady is there! What about that? Gloucester take the lead in sensational style. One of the best tries you'll see this season. Johnny May started the magic way back inside his 22. Hell of a run from Gareth Evans and Callum Braley, his first ever Premiership try. I said Gloucester had players that could open teams up. Johnny May, look at this, on his own five-metre line, shrugs out a one. The balance, he's looking for space, he's taking on the cumbersome runners. Good offloading, just about gets through the hands. But look at this for Gareth Evans, just driving through the contact. He's waiting for someone to run a line, but he keeps breaking the tackles. And because he does that, because he keeps his hands free, eventually the pace comes past him. You Callum Braley. Different match now. 21 points to 18. What a moment for Callum Braley, who up until now has had very limited opportunities. Gareth Evans gave him one. Brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant scrum half line down the middle of the field, always tracking for a youngster. That's that's mature play. And for, for Evans, so often you see players that know they haven't got the pace to go 50 metres, sort of break through the line and then look for the support too early. Evans just thought, oh, I'm going to keep my legs going and eventually one of the quick guys will go past me, I can give him the ball. Oh, hello, oh, this is going to be a red trouble. for George Cruz. A tip tackle and JP Doyle will surely have none of it. Cruz has been called JP. over. Can we check the tackle, please? It's going to be Just checked over, it. but it does not look good. You know what I'm going to say about your guys, don't yeah, you? Okay, go sort that out for me, please. Yeah, please. The referee just telling Billy Twelve trees to have a word with his guys, Elliot Stoot, came in after the tackle. But it's all going to be about the result and how Alaphanur lands. It's not good. He's landing the, the upper that... head, he's, or the upper head, the upper shoulder head region. It's the That's... leg drive as well, but in it from Cruz there, he's actually moved his legs to drive him down. That's what worries me. Well, the thing is, if Halifano doesn't put his hand out, it's a take, wreck. Take away the arm, where do we think he's landing? Because that just determines everything. OK, well, one more. Now he's saying, if you take away the arm, because what he's saying is the only reason he doesn't land on his head is because Halifano puts his arm down. In which case, if you take that away, it's a red card. I don't see how that isn't red. It has to be. Okay, can he, I can tell you what I've got. Let's get some different. Okay, the player is coming down on his, on, the, on his front chest. Yes. Okay, it's certainly not a shoulder or his head, so we've taken away the arm. So for me, that's a yellow card. Agreed. Okay, fine. That's an interesting call. You will have your own opinions, but George Cruz, I think, can consider himself a very, very lucky man. Again, I mean, I'm going with, absolutely going with Ben on the left roll, but um, Halifauna was twisting as well. You know, he was getting himself out of that scenario, wasn't he? Yeah. And the initial hit, if he hadn't twisted and got out of it, have a look here, the way... He knows he's going to get done, boom, turns around, twists, gets himself out of it. I mean, we don't want to see people red carded. I agree with it being a red card, but letter of the law... It could easily have been a red card, yeah. I don't want to see red cards for every tackle. But I've seen worse given. Gloucester, though, have their tails up, leading what? by three, and Stop. with an extra man. 
Shuffling forwards carefully. Braley, one of the try scorers to hook. Atkinson cuts back in field. There are holes opening up here. One or two tackles being missed. Charge down. Use it. A little bit of calm being restored by the settled, experienced head of 36 year old Neil de Kock. Johnny May doing just what was asked of him. Hibbard made a decent impact since he arrived on the scene. Evans doing well to shake off the attentions of Billy Vanapolo, all 19 and a half stone of him. Tricky one for Ransom, swirling in the breeze. He judged that very nicely. This wind has picked up a lot since the start. Ransom has not found touch. He's found hook. A big chase from the fullback. Sharple stands him up though and then heads upfield. Calamaphoni, Marco Brunapola enveloping him in the tackle. May is looking for work. Hibbard not expecting it. Well, he's lucky to get away with that. Hook inside ball for 12 trees. Afoa, Nick Wood on his birthday. 32 today, the loose head. Width on the ball. Big hit coming in from Ashton and Gareth Evans back to tidy. He's enjoying himself tonight. Gareth Evans on for the unfortunate Ben Morgan. Pace injected and here's plenty of it. Atkinson keeping the line. Real flow and momentum to what Gloucester are about now. Hook. To Halafanua right on the gain line, such a flat ball to run onto. We could have got the ball back on the inside, but Mako Vanapola struggling to keep up. Sharples with the leg drive. Tompkins onto the field in the centres. Ball stolen. Ransom runs away with it. And hacks it through. Strattle had to check his run. Nevertheless, he's bearing down on 12 trees on the chase. That is terrific defending from Dave Strattel. 12 trees under pressure. Saris look like they won the ball. They have. Tompkins. Billy Vunapola. Suddenly the emphasis has changed here and Saracens are looking very threatening. Bosch. Overlap out wide. Berger. Onwards to Joubert. And away for Ashton. Oh, they've got numbers in right close to the ruck if they can get quick ball. They haven't illegally. Penalty coming for the men in black. To Cock. Fancy his chances there for a moment or two. Petrus Duplessy wasn't ready for it. It won't matter because the penalty is there to be taken. Ashton considering the quick one. Play on. Play on. Goal line. Yes, sir. Goal line. Yes, sir. Action packed tonight. Oh, really opened up this Pen. second half. Just, just watch how slow. You see the turnover there. No one's in, so they're allowed to pick up. They kick ahead. Then look how slow Halafanur is to turn and then help Billy Twelvetrees out. Twelvetrees working his socks off. Halafanur is coasting. Twelvetrees gets turned over. Saracens almost score in the other corner. Yeah, go Left his arm in, yeah. There's Ashton desperately trying to feed the ball back, but not being allowed to do so. So the penalty has enabled Saris to tuck it into the corner for the line out. There's the tackle count, and that uh, 33 missed from Saris is not a happy stat. As we discussed, their aggressive line speed means that they do fall off a few, trying to hurry the opposition, but nevertheless, I don't think Paul Guster would be too happy with that. Reese Gill stripping off. Just, just be aware of the back pot enter. This yeah. as many okay. tackles as they've missed in any match this season, by the way. Yeah, what's wrong? 
Yep. James Johnston warming up as well, so it looks like the front row will have some refreshments from Mark McCall. Just looking at how many tackles each side have made, though, how little Saracens must be playing that Gloucester have only had to make 44 tackles to Saracens 121. A lot of driving play, which obviously doesn't count as a tackle. Bear having a little word with JP Doyle. He's in his sixth season with the club, the South African, one of the leaders. Changing him. Lads, the boarding the boarding the Taking a nasty bang to the shoulder, isn't he? Make sure you don't his shoulder, or do you think a stinger? He gets caught in the Still head, doesn't minutes, he? Boys. As he's coming in to make the so tackle. As you want. In which case, it might be a problem with the neck rather than the shoulder. You can see they're getting the neck brace out there. He doesn't have happy memories of matches against Saracens. Of course, Nick Wood, as Jan Thomas comes on, shown red in the opening game of last year against Saracens for. Stamping on Jacques Berger, he's also picked up three yellows against them in years gone by. Now this game is it is opening up. We've, we've all all commented on it, but it's the decision making now for Gloucester. Great break from Johnny May. I'm just going to pause it. Have a look down that short side, Billy Twelve Trees. I'm going to highlight him. He was in acres of space. He is strolling under the post there, completely unopposed. The boys are tired, of course they are, but the game is so tight, it is going to be one on a decision made around the breakdown. Do you go left, do you go right? Whichever side make it could be the difference. Lots more rugby to come this weekend. Round 13 of the Aviva Premiership, and tomorrow we're at the stoop for Harlequins against the Leicester Tigers from 3 o'clock. So in action I just, as I saw you against Wasps and, ball, and Sale against Northampton. And then on Sunday, we head to Kingston Park from one o'clock when you'll be able to see, see uh, all the highlights from the Premiership this weekend before uh, anywhere else on television from one o'clock. And then the Falcons will take on London Welsh. Martin Bayfield, what news? Well, it's an evening for the Scrum Arsenal with Dan Robson. Dan, they're going to be talking about your try for uh, for many months to come, but I suppose until the whistle goes and you get your victory, you can't really enjoy it quite yet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's always nice to get that try, but, you know, it's pretty close at the minute, so hopefully the boys can get over that line and finish the job. We've seen from Gloucester in, in previous weeks an inability to, to take the moment, seize the moment. In the first half, we thought that might be the case, but certainly in this second half, you're starting to put a huge amount of pressure on Saracens. Yeah, I mean, it's helping with that win. We've got a bit of a breeze behind us and the boys are putting in the ball well and, and getting some good territory. So, you know, we've just got to keep hold of it and just keep putting pressure on and, you know, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll tap those points and, you know, we'll, we'll get over the line. And obviously, we hope that Ben Morgan is OK, but how does an injury like that to one of your teammates affect the mood out on the pitch? Yeah, it's difficult to get over, obviously, but, you know, with, with Gaz coming on and, and making that, you know, assist for that try, it helps. It, you know, it shows the strength and depth that we've got in this squad and, you know, it's a real boost when you've got players coming onto the pitch like that. Another player down on the field at the moment, we hope he's OK. Very physical out there tonight. Yeah, definitely. As you expect from Saracens, you know, and, and Gloucester, these, these big games, you know, Friday night, it's, it's a great occasion and, you know, hopefully it can go the way for us tonight. Great stuff. Well, you certainly entertained the crowd, got Kings home cheering. For your sake, I hope you get the win. Well done. Of course, uh, Al will be bringing you updates as soon as we can on how Ben Morgan is. Thanks very much, Martin. Yes, the, uh, the attrition rate is looking like a, a nasty one for Gloucester this evening, but what a try this was. It was just sensational. Matt, we're talking about his future, obviously, with him heading to Wasp, a little bit fed up of playing second fiddle here at King's Home, but of course, Joe Simpson playing out of his skin at the moment for Die Young's side. There's no guarantees he's going to usurp him, is there? No, 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 I have to... Uh, I don't blame him for, uh, for moving on. He, you know, Gloucester is a great club, and they'll be very, very sad to see him go. But I don't blame him. He's got aspirations. He's a good player, very well-respected and rated here. 
and you just saw a little bit of skill that not many scrum halves could carry off. You know, as good a player, as international quality, captaincy that, that, that Greg Laidlord is, he doesn't score that try. I don't think he has the, the speed and, and necessarily the skill set to score that like Dan Robson. But then if you think about, you think about Wasps, well, actually, Joe Simpson's quite a similar type of player. So how that goes will be interesting to see, I think. Let's hear from the uh, the Saracens camp now. Martin Bayfield's with Kelly Brown. Kelly, you're close yep. to Gloucester, but it doesn't seem you can that you're able to stitch good passages of play together over these final 30 minutes. What do Saracens need to do? I think it's a tough one. It feels as if over the course of the whole game, you know, we've actually been in control. But the one thing that's been letting us down is we've been conceding very, very soft, soft penalties, and that's really been. Uh, that has really been putting us under a lot of pressure. The game, unfortunately, because of injuries, has been very disjointed. Does that suit you? Does it suit Gloucester? Does it work against you? I'm not sure. You know, for us, you know, here, you know, we've got a line out five metres out, so we need to stay. We need to stay focused, and we need to really, we need to really try and get some points here. How difficult is it to keep that focus when you get up ahead of steam, the whistle blows, and you have a five ten minute gap hey, I think it's part of the job so as I said it's up to us you know we'll stay we'll stay focused and we'll look to score some points confidence that the guys out there now having a few substitutions being made can finish the job yeah I think so as I said it's been a tough game uh, and at times it's, it, it sort of seems as if they have just managed to stay in the game so as I said I keep on saying it you know we just need to stay stay focused and we really really need to get some points here Kelly, great. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank I think Saris need to stay focused and get some points, Matt Dawson. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you, that's a, that is a difficult one. When you're behind, you know, with the, with the pressures on, uh, they've had their chances. They've been, they've been dominant at times, but we probably will be talking about this game at, at the ill discipline rather than anything else of Saracens, which will disappoint the management. And it's kind of symptomatic, this performance, don't you think, Ben? I mean, the match is not done yet. We may see a, a final flourish from them, which, which makes this point um, rather less relevant than it might be at the moment. But they haven't been dominating in the way that we've been used to seeing them do over the last couple of seasons. I mean, last season, they, they lost only three games in total in the regular campaign, didn't they? They haven't been at absolute full tilt this season. There are a number of reasons for that. But what are the chief ones in, in your opinion? I, I think a, a big thing is, is the loss of Steve Borthwick. He wasn't a very popular guy down here, I don't think. Steve Borthwick, the games I saw him play, the shed didn't like him very much. And there was a reason for that, because he had that pig-headed nature and took, took control and, and, and almost just that stubbornness got, got Saracens through when they weren't playing particularly well. And when they were playing well, well others shone. And you know, perhaps they, they miss a little bit of that. It's difficult to put. I mean, you're never, you're never going to play brilliantly all the time, and this isn't a crisis for Saracens by any means. You know, the third position, they'll still fancy their chances with 15 minutes to go that they can turn around a three-point deficit. I think also a lot of teams are now starting to understand how Saracens play, understand that mentality. How many times have we spoken about the wolf pack mentality here? Probably not very many because teams are not playing in the wrong areas of the field. We saw glimpses in the first half. When you get it wrong, all of a sudden, it suited Saracens beautifully well in that first half. Got the, Gloucester got their exit strategy wrong. They gave uh, dis The discipline was poor. Saracens got points, got territory. Yet Gloucester, I think, have had a good half-time. David Humphreys, I think, has had a great half-time because Gloucester have come out and played in a different way. Well, this is interesting. Maro Itoji getting his orders from Alex Sanderson, the young player going places, as we've been telling you here on BT Sport over the last few weeks. And uh, the patch that you see just behind the ears, if you weren't watching with us as they took on London Irish last weekend, they are what they call impact patches, which are looking to measure the impacts and the directions of the hits that these guys are taking in an attempt to, to battle concussion and understand it a little bit more. Saracen's leading the way in trying to get to the bottom of it. And it may be a, a three-year, four-year, five-year, who knows, perhaps even a, a ten-year plan in terms of gathering the information. It's not something that we're going to see immediate results from. It's been used in the NFL. 
But again, even over there, it's in its uh, relative infancy. So Itoji is coming on, and we're still waiting for poor old Nick Wood to be removed from the field of play. So Marcello Bosch has made way for Itoji. Forward replacing a back. Saracen's a man down, of course, with Cruz still in the bin. The other thing, as far as Saracens are concerned as well, I mean, you mentioned Steve Borthwick, Ben, but the loss of Matt Stevens as well, Moritz Botha now is gone. Those are three um, significant men, and Scout Brits as well not being available this season, having done a nasty uh, injury to himself with his knee. So some key men not, not available to them. Barrett missing for long periods too. Bosch himself hasn't played much, has he? So a, a lot of first choices not available for long stretches. Uh, exactly, and, and you know, when you're a team that, that relies on intensity, particularly in defence, you, know, you need to get that run of your first-line players' consistency or even the guys that come in need that time together to try and get back up to the levels that you're used to. It's taken an awful long time, this. They have to get any neck. Query, let's just call it a query, right just in case there is something underlying there. Always so careful that pitch side care for the players, and rightly so. I'm, I'm amazed that both sides have not got into any just very, very light movement, little skills, even a huddle. It seems sort of quite loose and disjointed. And this next passage of play, whenever it does occur, and there's absolutely no rush for this, it, it's got to be, it's crucial. It's crucial to the game. We can't. You know, the players can't lose focus of that, even though there is obviously a bad injury. Andy Farrell, the man in your shot, of course, part of the England coaching staff with a, a watching brief. The Six Nations squad to be announced on January the 21st, just 12 days away. There'll be a squad of around 33 that'll be named, and of course the Saxon squad as well. England Saxons off to play the Irish Wolfhounds uh, on the weekend before I think it's the Friday before the Six Nations begins, of course, England kicking off against Wales in Cardiff. And uh, I think we might see some interesting names in that, that Saxons group. Getting to that point now, isn't it, where if you are an outsider, the likes of Henry Slade, Christian Wade, maybe Danny Cipriani, those on the fringes, players of that kind, it's, um, it's time really, isn't it, to... Well, you, to you, make your mark. You just saw on the screen there a couple of leaky boys there. Are we going to see any Wigan leaky Legends. boys playing for the for the Saxons, maybe? ex leaky boys? I can't think of any, can you? No, no. they never get mentioned on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> the unmentionable. Just in case anybody's playing the Sam Burgess bingo drinking game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they've had a dry night. That's for sure, they've had a dry night. So again, another very unfortunate incident with Nick Wood leaving the field on his 32nd birthday on a stretcher. That's two for the night. Two very influential men in these parts as well, Nick Wood and Ben Morgan. Hammer blow to David Humphreys, regardless of the, the outcome. wave to the crowd from Nick Wood, which has to be good news. Itoji leaping highest for Saracens as we go straight back into the thick of it. Gloucester have to be on red alert here. They've given up the penalty. Well, it's exactly the same penalty from the first half when they had the penalty try. Obviously, they weren't flying towards the line this time. It won't be a penalty try, but they've been warned about doing that. What same Andy Hazel talked ball. about at half-time. Side entry, 11. Side entry, the penalty coming, but Saracens sniffing the score to Cock. Looking for it, and Bunapola can't gather. 11. 11. 11. So JP Doyle wants another 11. word. 11. Yeah. That's Johnny May. It's a yellow. Ball going forward, side entry. No, he went straight to the side. Side entry. Thought it was for pulling down. He called Maul, and they hadn't managed to sack the line out, as Andy Hazel was talking about before. And if you don't do that, you're then playing catch up. You, you must see Saracens kicking to the corner. So that's four 
yellows for the match from JP Doyle and Saracen's looking threatening again. Elliot Stokes done it again. He's pulled the man over after the ball was called. Nick Tompkins enveloped by Cherry and White and another card coming. Or is it? If it's the same offence, then surely it has to be, doesn't it? The first line out, the sub, where is he? Four. Four has sacked the first line out after a mall. Here he's gone in early and driven on the lifter early. I'll keep sending them. He'll keep sending them, he will, absolutely he will. JP Doyle, a red card and 13 yellows before tonight. And another four, as we've been mentioning this evening. Oh, he's talking about Tom Savage. I, I thought it was Elliot Stook, who was penalised in the first half. He gets facing the wrong way, Elliot Stook, and then leaning backwards, trying to pull the player over. If they don't go down, as they move forward, they do go down. The referee's already called more. Oh. Again, Gloucester player on the floor, what? hasn't pulled it over. The Todgy, the target again. Going Third across. time lucky, will it be? For Saracens, looks like Maka Vunapola is at the heart of things in there. Or is it his brother, Billy? Here goes Mako. Reaches out for the score. Saracens back in front and striking after that long, long delay. Seizing the moment. Well, I'll tell you what I like about Mako Vunapol. He always makes good decisions under pressure. And he doesn't panic. Really good drive. They come round the corner. Yeah. They start to accelerate and they get on the front foot. They think they're going to go over. The ball doesn't quite come. He takes on three players, goes short, but he knows exactly how short he is and plays the ball immediately. We saw him last week go to the line, realise it wasn't on and give a ball out the back. They scored in the corner through Ashton. A brace against London Welsh. And another one this evening, three months out this season, early on, working very, very hard on his fitness with the head of performance, Phil Morrow, and it's paying off. Drifted away on the breeze. Could prove critical. We've had a few that we might look back on and call critical. Saracens with a two-point advantage. The Saracens just need to keep that driving play going because it's been so destructive for Gloucester. Surely they've got to try and change the way they're defending Saracens' drive. Billy Vanapola heading straight upfield. Plowing his way up well towards the 10 metre line. De Kock again with that familiar Saracens exit strategy. Gareth Evans underneath it. Snared by Jamie George. 10 minutes to go. The game finally balanced. Such a game of incident as that ricochets off a Saracens boot. So much happening. Two really nasty injuries, four yellow cards, one that perhaps should and could have been a, a red. Some excellent tries and some fine rugby in amongst it all. And Saracens infringing. Yeah, Schubert, as he jumps, he's going for the ball, but just can't resist that little tug on the arm. Captain now for Saracens, Joubert with Kelly Brown off the field. And James Hook has thumped that into the business area. He's up first, he almost wants the ball there, he's read the play. Roy Fisher unmoved, not so the King's home faithful. It's a poor line out. Saracens regroup. Got to take those sort of opportunities, you feel. High and tricky. Is that forwards from Strettle? Yes, it was, but on they go. Here's Sharples. It's 
back in field and Hamilton does the tackling. Braley wants it quicker than that. Kvesic realises not too many options out wide. Calamaphoni. Big contest for the ball on the ground. It's there for Braley again. Hook. 12 trees. A foer again running the dummy line and not gathered cleanly by Evans. That has gone forwards at the second attempt. Sarries now. Bang it away. James Hook. A rare fumble from the normally extremely secure Alex Good. Just half an eye on the touchline, maybe. Six handling errors for the night. From the Saracen side. Another replacement onto the field for Gloucester. It's he's Billy Burns. On. Yeah, he's come on for Sharples. He's left the field bleeding. He's back on now, back on. We wear time off, now we're time on. Water off, boys. Let's go. Came on at half time, didn't he, against Wasps a couple of weeks ago. Made an instant impact. The, the younger brother of Freddie, just 20 years old. Yeah, just... Crouch! Head on, head on this side. He must be on the outside. Let's get on the inside. I'm not talking about this again. Sort it out. Told you what to do. Let's go, get in your gaps. Get on the outside. I think with Saracens having replaced Marcelo Bosch before on the inside, with Mario Koji, the second row, they've now brought on Tim Stree that instead of bringing George Crew back on. Set. Obviously, oh, felt, obviously felt halfway through that sim binning they needed more weight for their driving play up front and the forwards and it worked. <laughs> that area of the pitch is getting a good carve up by the looks of things. He's there, it's no problem. A lot of rain in the West Country over the last few days. Show me a picture. Let's go. A lot of decision making to be made here. If Gloucester get themselves into a position for a drop goal, do they squeak out two points? There's five minutes, five and a half minutes to go. In your slots, crouch. Bind. Set. Man down behind the scrum, remember Gloucester. Johnny May in the bin again. It's hit the deck on this near side. As Ben has just pointed out, that's to win the game, the drop goal. I wasn't very good at maths at school. Do you need to go back to school? I don't. Do. To get into position for a drop goal, then. Forget that last sentence, never happened. Thanks, Ben. So there's... Um, Crouch! Halafanua lurking there off his wing, looking Bye. to perhaps carve a line or a, offer himself as a, a decoy runner for Billy Burns should the ball come their way. A little nudge. Gloucester oh. looking for the penalty. Oh. Block. And we Super C in the air. Air. All over the place. Happily up on his feet very quickly, but that did not look safe. He's done nothing illegal. He's done nothing illegal. So the tight heads done nothing illegal. That's not illegal. He can't do that by himself. The call from JP Doyle Let's go. is that the tight heads done nothing illegal. He's just Let's been go. forced up into the Let's air go. from good pushing from Jim Hamilton behind and Jan Thomas in front of him. 
His feet are on the floor. What JP Doyle saying is there's nothing he can do about that. Find. Interesting decision. Well, they're screaming for the penalty, aren't they? The Gloucester coaching staff. And the crowd are, are very clear in their views, as you would expect them to be. They think Saracens are spoiling for time. I so said Matt Kovacic was also getting his head stuck in there, Ben, as well, wasn't he? I mean, it wasn't completely legal from Gloucester there, so as much as it did look pretty bad, and if you're on the field, you're the coach and stuff, you're screaming for a Gloucester penalty, but I think JP Dawes called that absolutely spot on. Kingsone's getting noisy now. Four minutes to play, two points the difference. We're going to have another crack at the scrum. Well, oh, Thor has got the upper hand there. He needs to just shear off, break that bind. And whipped out just a little untidily. Here's Billy Burns. This is Halo Fanua crashing up to the gain line. No one there. Calamophony feeds it off. Burns in his pristine strip. Jan Thomas, the new loose head. Feeds it on for Kvesic. Gloucester playing the rugby in the right area of the field. The option is there for the long-range drop goal, potentially. They'll want to get closer, though. They'll want the penalty, ideally. The Saracens need to be careful they don't go too hard at the ball and risk a penalty. Just trust their defence. They've got an extra man on the field at the moment. Braley to Burns. 12 trees. Hit hard by the double tackle. Gets up and goes again. Braley to Calamaphoni. Terrific Saracens defence for the moment. Very disciplined as well. Still the red and whites come at them. Hook looking to find a way through the outside and then trying the jink in field. Ball's there. Braley, 12 trees. Clattering forwards is Calamaphoni again. 15th phase as Billy Burns searches for an opening. Now they're in the red zone. Inside the 22, quick handling. Hallow for Noah, isolated. Does so well to drive in field. Very small area to work with as Gareth Evans crashes it up. 12 trees. Finding Stook. Twelve trees again, cut down low Attack by Andy Goode, and there's a scrap for the ball there. Jamie George thought otherwise, have a little nibble at it, and then backed away. One mistake could, almost certainly will, decide this match. Twenty-third phase of possession. Hawks back in the pocket. He's just choosing his time. Still, they drive in field. This could be the breeze. Braley is setting himself now. This is the shot for glory from James Hook. The drop goal, miles away. That could be the opportunity lost as Ransom sets off. Good speed on the outside. Gloucester back inside their own half. Was that it? Use it? Or will they get another go at it? Atkinson looking to get that ball away all the time when the tackles come in. To the short side they go. Oh, just too slow in delivering the ball. It's been knocked forwards. Advantage over. De Kock chasing through. Here's Ashton. The dribble. And the score. Sarri's closed the deal. Well, just having a look, Understood. just in case Chris Ashton is in, uh, in front of Neil de Kopp there on the break. Wow, he is a poacher of the try line, isn't he? Turnover from Hook, and he's offside, offside by a mile. JP. Great call, yep. JP Doyle. Black was offside. He was offside. Correct. So where's the mark, please? Back on the halfway line. Okay. No try. Oh, oh, back on the halfway. 14 offside. Well, there's a, a chance offside. of a shot at goal. 
but given the way the wind has picked up, it is a very, very long shot. Got to get that mark right. I'm not sure he's in the right spot there, is he? It's moving now. Okay. They've been told they've got enough time to go for the line out. The other side of the line. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's pretty much on the halfway line, isn't it? Yeah, he's absolutely spot on. Maybe even have gained the yard there. He's going for posts. I actually think there is a little bit of wind behind. I mean, it's a box to kick, but you've got to go for it, haven't you, with 15 seconds to go? What are you saying, Ben? I'm no. just saying there's loads of people leaving. I can't believe it. Maybe they're just going to rely on the cheer. <laughs> Jim. I think they'll gather it one way or another. Even if you're in the outskirts of Gloucester, you'll can probably get, yeah, know. You. Kitty, can I get a final confirmation on the mark, please? Good refereeing. He's asking the TMO exactly where the mark is. James, just hold on. One second. I think it's about a metre further forward than that. That's right on halfway, isn't it? Halfway, bingo, he's, right he's on. He's offside on the other side of the halfway, the Gloucester side. Correct, there we go, thank you. So this is a 50 metre kick for James Hook. He's kicked four of the seven on offer this evening. His longest kick to date this season, 43 metres. Only 12 frees traditionally is the guy who steps up for the long range efforts. But all eyes on the Welshman.